All right, guys. Uh, welcome to this. Uh, one of my, welcome to one of my six-month uploads. Um, this time, I'll be showing you how to make this Counter-Strike-themed artwork animation. Uh, not this one here. Although, if you want to see that one, I mean, the same things that I say about this one will apply to that one. Um, so, as you can see, all we're going to be doing is putting our name animated i will not be doing that i will be using a template for that which i will have in the description if you want to use this exact same template and we will be adding an effect kind of to the background here as you can see i've added these kind of star i don't know it's called starburst and of course we'll be doing the counter-strike gun which this is obviously one of my guns aquamarine revenge here you can use one of your own skins if you have skins which I'm assuming if you're doing this, you probably want to show off your own skins. And uh, you can use whatever gun you want. And I'll be showing you how to do that. So first, what you're going to need is your background. Um, if you, Assuming you want to do it like this, where you have your Steam background. And then you want to put your artwork you know, behind it, or I guess in front of it. Um, you're going to need to get these images. Um, now I've done the long side here. I won't be showing you how to do that. There's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do a longer side. This isn't even the longest side you can do. You can do a massive one. But um, but to get this picture, you're going to go over to Steam Background Cropper, which I have the link for in the description. And you're going to paste in your picture link. You can either log in, in with your own Steam account, which is what I did, and it would be better. Or you can go over to your uh, Steam here. I'll drag it over to for my on the monitor. Uh, go to profile. Go to um, inventory. Steam, and find your background, which mine is over here. Click on it. Press on view full size, and it'll bring up this. Then you can just copy this URL here, and you can paste it here, and it will do. The same thing, obviously, it's not going to change because it's the same background. But that's you can also do that, or you can just log in with your Steam account. That would be easier, obviously. Uh, and then what you're going to do is, it, you'll, I think it will look like this, and you can press on toggle short images here, and then you can just download it as a zip file. And then if you open up your zip file here, you will find, if I drag it over from my other monitor, you'll find all these files. These will all look confusing. But uh, you only need these four at the bottom here, the artwork ones. The artwork right top, right middle, and right bottom. These are the short images. And then the middle, which is actually what we're going to be editing um, to, you know, actually put the video and shit over. Uh, you will, of course, need Adobe After Effects and Photoshop to do this. Okay, so what we're going to need next is our Counter-Strike footage. So obviously we're going to launch Counter-Strike. Uh, and I will, and in Counter Strike, we're going to need a uh, a green screen or like a blue screen or whatever map, which you can just go over to the workshop in Steam under Counter Strike, and just type in green screen. If type in green screen, there is a bunch of maps. I just pressed on a random one. I don't remember which one. But it doesn't really matter. Just download one of the green screen maps unless the gun you're using is green. Like uh, like the Aquamarine Revenge. Personally, I use the blue screen, uh, which is pretty much the same thing, except it's blue. So that when you cut it out, it doesn't actually remove the green from your Aquamarine Revenge. But today we're going to be using my M4. My M4 Buzzkill, which is a yellow skin. And I don't think a green screen will affect it at all. Now, I already have one downloaded, so I'm not going to download another one. But all you want to do is launch Counter-Strike. So I will see you in Counter-Strike. All right, guys. So now we're in Counter-Strike. And you're going to want to go over to Offline of Bots, Workshop, and choose your green screen map. And launch it. No bots. There we go. Kick the bot. So here it is, the green screen map. It's not anything special, of course. It's nothing special. Um, you just want to, you know, face the green screen while doing whatever you want with your gun so a few commands we're going to need well first of all I need to actually switch teams because I said I was going to do my M4 and I went on T side which is dumb okay 
Now we're on the T or CT side. Now the hands are the same. This map in particular has these uh, hands from hand models from uh, T side like Aztec and stuff like that, which I don't actually like personally, but that's okay. Okay, so a few commands we're gonna actually need to do are CL. Well, actually, first of all, we're gonna turn on cheats. So SV underscore cheats one. All the commands you're gonna need will be in the description if you can't read this for whatever reason. Um, but so yeah, then after we have SV cheats enabled, we can do CL draw hood space zero. There we go. That gets rid of your hood so that you can see everything clearly. Now we're going to need to spawn an M4. So you're going to do uh, give weapon, give space weapon, underscore whatever weapon. In this case, it will be M4. Now there is no M4A4, but if you type in M4A1, it will just give you whatever you have equipped, which in my case is my M4A4. So here's the buzz kill. Now to do the footage, we're going to slow down time, assuming because what we're going to be doing is kind of a looping effect. Personally, I'm going to be doing the reload animation. So just like the AK that we saw at the very start, we're going to pretty much, I'll just show you here. We're going to have like the mag entering, looping, entering and coming back out and just looping like that. It's going to be about a four second or five second GIF. So, uh, so to do that and make that last, you know, about two seconds, you want your, or about two and a half seconds, you want your actual like footage to last about two and a half seconds so that when you loop it, you know, it will do everything in reverse so that it will do properly and won't have a big cut in the middle of it. Um, so now I'm going to record the footage itself. Okay, so I completely forgot to mention in, you know, the last part that you, that in order to slow down time, you need to do a command called host underscore time scale and then set it to whatever. One would be normal speed, two would be double speed, and then, you know, zero point whatever would be slower. This is doing, um, while doing this footage, I used 0 0.1. So that is what I would recommend you setting it to. So yeah, just forgot to mention that. Okay, so now we have the footage recorded and what we're gonna do is open up our After Effects. However, we're gonna use the template that I mentioned um, the with, the with the writing in it. We're gonna use that template, which I've already downloaded, of course. It is right here and it should be called minimalistic lines template or something like that uh, Which you should have downloaded and if you launch it, it will just launch after effects assuming you have after effects and Photoshop You need them both. I already mentioned that They're not free, but if you're smart, I'm sure you can figure out how to get them for free <laughs> um, Okay, so when you launch the template it should look something like this the font will probably be different uh, because this is all like this is I've already used this template. I just deleted pretty much everything I've done here. Um, so first you're going to want to go over to here to T, you know, pressing on the text icon. I just change this to whatever you want. You know, you can use whatever font you want and whatever writing you want. Most likely you're going to be writing your name, uh, which is the case for me, which my Steam name is Braided Asser. So once again, you can use whatever font you want. This is Bubblegum, which I downloaded from, I think it's called defonts.com. A bunch of shit ton of free fonts on there if you want to check it out so okay so if we just play the animation here from start to you know end which is about five and a half seconds long uh, wait for it to load up fully so it actually plays smoothly there we go so that is pretty much what the animation looks like I think it's very clean very good looking and something like this doesn't look like you use a template if anyone cares fuck off big Dave all right now, uh, we're going to actually move this up because the gun model is going to be like here. Hopefully you can see my cursor throughout all this. Gun, gun model is going to be down here. So we're going to have to move all this up. So we're just going to press on the move, the you know, arrow icon. And I'm just going to use the um, arrow keys to move this all the way up instead of my mouse so that it stays uh, in the center. So we're gonna actually move down a little bit here. That should be okay. And then we're gonna move these lines, or should say here, down here, the lines. And if we take off the lock, this will be locked so they can't mess it up. But if you take off the lock icon, then you can move it around and change it up if you want. If you're actually good with After Effects, you can actually do all this. I'm not very good with After Effects, which is why you should not ask me for help. If something doesn't work, or you're asking how to do something, I most likely know about as much as you. So. 
So please don't ask. I'm just going to make sure that's somewhat centered. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So now if we play it through, once again, it needs to load up fully. There we go. And it will just be the same thing, except it's up there. So next, we're going to import our picture, our background image that we found. So I'm just going to move this After Effects over. All right, I guess I can just minimize it. That would work better. And here it is, the artwork middle piece. So we're just going to drag that over here into the composition here and uh, full screen again and then you're going to want to just drag this onto the image and there it is so now once as you can see it's over everything so we're going to want to put it under everything by going down here just dragging it below everything else so now there's your background so if we play it once again it's the same thing except it's your background this is already a pretty cool artwork if you just want to do this um, if you're not bothered to do everything else but we're going to spice it up a little bit so first we're going to add an effect to the background here. So I don't know that many effects. So if you're once again, if you're like, oh, I want to do this, how do I do it? I don't know. Just search up on Google. Uh, I searched it up on Google. I was like, hey, what's a cool star effect in After Effects? And they said Starburst, CC Starburst. So we don't just want to put this on the background because it will overlap the background pretty much. It will look like shit. So we want to right click over here, go to new. And solid this will create a new and press ok over here and that showed up on my second monitor sorry about that but you want to press ok and the little tab that opens uh, and here it is as you can see it's very ugly however if we put the effect on top of it it will look a lot better um, now we're gonna mess around with this effect because this is these are way too big and they also move way too fast like it looks like shit especially in Steam because it's going to be limited to I think 24 FPS here like it's going to look really choppy you want things to move kind of slowly which is why which is one of the reasons why we're doing slow motion footage of our gun because if it were full speed it would look very choppy um, so we're going to make these smaller so first we're going to go down to here over dark gray solid that's what it should be called the layer that we made and we're going to click on the arrow and we're going to go down to effects, CC Starburst. And here are like your effects, everything on your effects. So right now, if we change shit, it will change everything. Like it will change for the whole, uh, for the whole duration of the video. So we change like speed. I like like 0 0.15 here. This works well for me. So as you can see, they're a lot slower. It will change for the entire composition. Um, if you want it to be slower at some points and then speed up again or you're going to want to use the uh, key framing so I'll show you I'll show you how to do that with the size okay so the size I want is about 54 I think was it is that what I used yeah I think that size works well and that speed you can still see them very clearly and they look kind of cool um, however I don't want it to be that big all the time because as you can see here at the very start of the composition they are a different uh, like they look different or they're in a different position than at the end like at the end of the composition is completely different so if so when it loops like look at the effect here when it loops it kind of cuts you know it cuts back to the start we don't want that and as far as i know there's no real way to make this loop nicely because you can't really change where the dots are however what we can do is pretty much make them fade in and out so yeah, we're going to click on the clock icon next to the size and that will activate keyframing. So now it, it made a keyframe here. So at the start, it's going to be 54, the size. However, we're going to change that to 20. If you try to change it to 0, it changes to 20. So I might as well just change it to 20. So now at the start, it's going to be 20. Now, since we only have one keyframe at the very start, it's going to be 20 for the entire composition. However, if we go about half a second in, and then change it to 54 again. Now it's going to be uh, tiny at the start, and once we reach half a second, it's going to change to 54. However, it doesn't do that instantly, as you can see down here. If we move it next to size, the number it it, it changes gradually. So that means if we go to the end and also have it fade out for the last half a second, and once again change the size to, uh, or I should say. To the very end and we change the size to 20 again then it is it won't look good because after 54 it won't just be 54 54 54 and then 20 
it'll be 54 and then gradually down. So like near like the end, the dots are no, nowhere near 54 anymore. Now they're like 28. So we once again want to go about half a second away and set this to like 53 because that won't really be noticeable. However, it will be enough to change the keyframe. So now we'll go from 20 to 54 and then from 54 very gradually to 23, which once again isn't noticeable. Uh, and then from, or I mean 53, not 23. Uh, and then from 53 back to 20. So that way now when it loops, it will, you know, fade in and then it would be big. And then at the end it will fade out. So even though it doesn't loop perfectly, you can't tell because the dots are so small, you can't tell that they actually cut and go back to an entirely different position. So now that we have that effect on, we want to put the gun video in. Okay, so once again, we're gonna go back here, turn the, that effect off, and we're gonna minimize this, and we're gonna find our footage, which I saved in unfinished videos, and right here, M4 footage, drag that in. So yours look, should look about the same as mine. Uh, full size that. And we're going to drag the footage into the video. Now, as, as you can see, since this picture, the background picture is like 506 by 506 pixels, and the footage you recorded is most likely 1080p, or it should be anyway, uh, the gun is way too big. So we're going to scale this way down. So we're going to go to M4 footage, and we're going to go to transform and scale and we're just gonna drag that way down okay now you want see that where the green ends you want that to be above slightly above or on par with the background otherwise because the green screen isn't perfect so it will pretty much get make a weird kind of separation there so we want to just mess around with the scale until we get it just just over so that that right there should be fine okay so now we want to get rid of the green screen, obviously. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Effect, over to Keying, and then we're going to go Key Light 1.2. And then once the Key Light effect opens here, we're just going to go over to Screen Color, and we're going to grab the um, Eye Dropping tool, and we're just going to click on any part of the green. And there you go, now the green screen is gone. We can click out of the Key Light. Green screen is gone, and if we just play the... Um, obviously the video is way too long because I didn't just record the part that I need, I recorded the entire reloading animation. So like if we drag this, like you can see that the entire, like the entire reload animation is, uh, has been recorded. So, so we're gonna put our cursor halfway mark, at the halfway mark. So however long your video is, but if you use this template, it'll be five and a half seconds long. So you wanna go to two and a half seconds and just a bit more, so in between two and a half and three seconds here. And that is where we want, at that point is where we want the magazine to pop into the gun, okay? So right there, okay? So now if you if you go, you know, at the very start, the magazine will be popping in. And I'm just gonna play it here. Magazine will be slowly popping in and then at the halfway mark here, the magazine will have popped in, okay? So that, so then the rest of the video is useless pretty much. So now once once we find that and once we get the halfway mark of the video and we have the magazine popping in at that mark, that's when we want to loop or I mean reverse the rest of the footage. So what we're gonna do is um, split. So we're gonna edit and split layer. So now the rest of this footage here, if we just click on the rest of the footage, we can just delete that. We don't need it. And then we're gonna go back to the start and we're gonna delete all the footage before this as well. So we're gonna once again click on the layer and split layer and uh, delete, click on that and just delete the every all the footage before the start of the composition here. So now what we have is pretty much the magazine starting to go in at the very start and then at the halfway point, the magazine pops into the gun. So now we're going to um, click on the layer and go up to edit and click duplicate. And now we have the same footage twice. So you're gonna drag the, the, the duplicated footage over. So now, you know, it's gonna be that footage up to the halfway mark and then pretty much that footage again until the end of the composition. 
and obviously we want that to be reversed. So we're going to right click on the duplicated footage and we're going to go up to time and uh, time reverse layer. So now that footage is has been completely reversed. So now if we play it all the way through, we're just going to let it load up so it's not choppy here. As you can see, it reverses. Now there won't be any sound in the GIF, so don't worry about that. So now if it loops, your name plays over here and the reload animation just loops. And that looks very cool. So now we're pretty much done here. Done. So now what I'm going to do is blur the background a little bit because I want the gun to kind of stand out more. So we're going to go up to the background here. Where is it? Oh, it's down here. Scroll down, find artwork middle, and we're going to go up to effect, blur and sharpen, and Gaussian blur. And hello. Oh, it's right here. Um, and we're just going to put up the blur a little bit. We don't want it to be too blurry, but we just want it to be about that blurry. So I have mine at 5.3 here. It doesn't really matter. So just so that the gun kind of pops out more and the background is less, you know, defined so that what your eyes are drawn to immediately are the gun itself. All right, so we want to brighten the gun a little bit. So what we're going to do is click on the first part of the footage and go up to color correction and vibrance. And we will pretty much, here's the vibrance here. I'm just going to turn up the vibrance a little bit just to make that gun pop out a little bit more and make it a little bit more uh, colorful. Now, since my gun is yellow, we don't want to turn it up too much because otherwise it will start turning a bit orange here. As you can see, that's starting to look a bit orange. So we're actually going to keep that saturation down. So I have my vibrance set at 22, my saturation set at two. And if we just want to compare that, here it is, you know, at this part of the footage which we have edited. And then here it is at the part that we haven't edited. So it's a very small amount. Actually on this gun, a very, very small amount. On the Aquamarine Revenge, it was a huge difference because Aquamarine Revenge is such a dark skin, really. Well, the buzzkill is bright yellow. So if you turn it up a lot, it would pretty much just look orange and you don't really want it to look orange because that's not what it looks like in the game. So anyway, we're going to repeat that with uh, with the other one. So effect, color correction, uh, vibrance, and it was at 22 here and 2 at the saturation. So now both of the footages are the same color. So now if we just loop it, it looks, now I want the video to load back up here. It looks pretty cool <laughs> once we, once, once we actually lose properly. There we go. So as you can see, that looks pretty sick in my opinion. And it's a custom thing, you know, not everybody and their mother will have this. So actually what I want to do is move the gun a little bit. Cause as you can see a lot of kind of free space here and the gun looks quite small. So we're going to actually move it a little bit, have a bit more of the gun showing here. And we're going to do the same thing with the other footage. So we're actually going to have to look at the positioning of both. So we're going to look at this footage. We're going to transform position is one, three, four, two, five, three. So we're going to do the same thing to the other footage. Click on the arrow, transform one, three, four, one, three, four. And uh, what was this 253 is the same. So now both footages should be just close these back up here. Both footages should be in the same place. So now, once again, I'll just let it loop one more time after it loads back up just to show you what kind of the final product will look like. Now, I might personally actually change the name of the color or the color of the name here to yellow just because why, why not really? Highlight the name and click on this right here. And that will bring up the color wheel and we can grab the uh, pin or the eyedrop tool and look at the gun here. And obviously that's quite dark. So we're gonna actually turn it up. Now, as you can see the, even, even the color wheel thinks that that's an orange gun because we turned up the saturation a bit too much. So you, you can mess around with the saturation. It'll, it'll work a bit better with guns that aren't yellow. Uh, if you're, you know, doing uh, a AK Vulcan or something that'll look better. So we're gonna do that. And now the writing is that color and we want to make the lines also that color. So we're gonna go down. So we're gonna click on lines and we're gonna have to go up to fill here and print just, I just want the same color as the writing. Bam, there we go. So now everything is quite orange and that's fine. So that will be the final video here. Once we did that, that loop. 
There we go. So th this is what the video will look like, obviously without the sound because GIFs can't produce sound. So now we're going to want to make this into an actual GIF. So now we have this done. We want to save as, first of all, just to actually have a After Effects file. And you want to keep that safe just in case you either fuck something up or you want to go back and maybe change something without having to redo everything. So we're just going to M4 uh, artwork. That's what I'm going to call it. And uh, once that saves, and now we're going to actually export it and render it. So we want to go down to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. Now we're going to go up to uh, down to Output mod Module, click on Lossless. Well, it says Lossless. It'll open up this, and we want to format PNG sequence. That's what we want. So then we're going to click OK. And then this is where Output 2, this is where it will save the actual frames, because this will pretty much render it as frames. So just, I'm just going to call this, uh, I don't know, M4. Uh, and the folder which we will save in should be called lines if you use this template. Save. And then we can click on the render button. Okay, so now it was rendered. You'll know because the bar will stop and it will do a ding -ding -ding noise. And we want to click out of it. Save changes. And what we will be left with is a folder called lines, or in my case, it will be called lines and it will be filled with all of the frames. So you can't make your video too long because I think Photoshop can only handle like 480 frames or something like that. To make it into a GIF, this one's only 130, so it'll be, we'll be fine, you know, five and a half second video. No problem, you can make probably make the video like 20 seconds, but I don't think you want a 20 second GIF uh, looping on your profile. So now we're gonna open up Photoshop here so now the Photoshop is open, what we're going to do is click on, well, once it actually fully loads, click on File, Scripts, and Load Files into Stack. There, there is another way, and most videos will show you another way of how to make a GIF. However, on my Photoshop, it might be outdated or whatever. It doesn't work. So what I do is go down to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. It'll open up this. You want to go down to Browse, Desktop, where you saved the lines, or where you saved the frames. And you want to open up the folder and highlight all of the frames. Click OK. Wait for it to load on here. Once it has, you'll be able to click OK. Okay, everything loaded in. Click OK. And it will load it. It will start loading up all the frames here. So this will take a while. Okay, so all the files have loaded. Here are all your frames, which are quite a lot of them. I'm going to make this up into a GIF. We're going to go down here to Timeline. This is already open for me, but for some people it might not be. Um, so you have to click on Timeline. On, and if this isn't there at all, like Timeline isn't there at all, you're just going to go to Window and make sure that Timeline is selected here. So once your Timeline is here, you go over to the Options here and press on Make Frames from Layers. This will pretty much make a video, you know, make a GIF from these layers. However, these are in reverse order for whatever reason. So we're going to go to reverse frames here. So now it should be in the right order. However, each frame is like, there's too much delay between them. So we're going to pretty much go to select all frames and then click on one of the, whichever one you want, click on where it says zero second. And we're going to go to other and a little window like this should pop up and we're going to do 0 0.04 this will be for a 24 fps video which this is and it, if you're making a steam artwork all of them should be and it will pretty much make it 24 fps so now if we play it as you can see it just loops it is the gif this is what you'll be uploading to steam so we just want to go to file save for web this will pop up and we, this will usually say JPEG here because most people are saving pictures with uh, with Photoshop. So I want to click on it and click on GIF. So you'll see all these colors and shit like that. And just click save and save it to wherever you want. And obviously you can rename it to whatever you want. I didn't because I'm not bothered. <laughs> so now it's saved and if you just click out of everything, it should be right here. So now if we open it up, It'll launch it in Internet Explorer for whatever reason. But here's your GIF. This is what you'll be uploading to Steam. And then click Save and Continue. And the file's too big. Of course, I have completely forgot to mention that. Sometimes if you make this, you know, 1080p footage, your file might be too big. This one's 10.4 megabytes. 
and you need it to be eight megabytes actually or less than eight megabytes to actually be able to upload it to steam so so we're going to go to this website right here easygift.com i'll have a link in the description and you want to go to you know gif optimizer here i'm going to choose our file so ours is right here so here's our video and as you can see it's 10.4 megabytes which is too big to upload to steam so we're going to go to optimize here it should already be open but if it isn't click on optimize and then click on lossy gif and this is permanently going to just compress your file uh, depending on how big the file is you'll want to do more or less compression um, now as you can see here it says 30 light compression 200 is heavy so we're gonna not even do 30 we only need it to be lowered by two and a half megabytes so we're gonna we're gonna type in like 20 and see how much that does oh it's still slightly too big so we're gonna go up to 25. so there you go 25 is now optimized and as you can see there's pretty much no difference from what i can tell the orange on the original is a little bit more orange which isn't actually a problem because it was too orange in the actual footage itself and as you can see it's 7.9 megabytes so just under the threshold of steam so that is perfect click on save and it will download it here i'm going to drag this to our desktop and I'm just going to rename it to M4 GIF Compressed. And this is what we're going to upload to Steam. So once again, we're going to go to our profile, uh, upload artwork, not game specific, blah, choose file, go down to M4 GIF Compressed. Uh, I certify this artwork, save and continue. And there you go, it's uploaded. Well, in a few seconds it will be anyway and go to profile edit profile go down to your artwork showcase it, you know it might be whatever showcase you have assuming you're level 10 you can choose it here and you have to choose artwork showcase so this is my footage that i use however if we click on here and click the newest one it should be the m4 here so that also looks pretty cool but I will stick personally with my AK, so then we can go save changes here. But I'm going to go back to my AK and click save changes. So that is the end of the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I know it's long, um, but it's kind of hard to explain everything in a short matter of time. But really, it doesn't take very long. If you somewhat know what you're doing with After Effects or you just follow my tutorial well and quickly, you should have this done within within 45 to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, including recording the footage itself and all that jazz. So uh, if you did enjoy this video, you know, leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want. And I'll see you in my next six month upload. Bye bye.